Today, we're gonna be making one of my kids' favorite dinners. It's inspired by the movie A Christmas Story, of course, and it involves making meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and red cabbage. So we're gonna get started. And the lovely Holly is going to be helping. She's gonna start by chopping up an onion. Her favorite thing to do. So if Holly will go ahead and chop up that onion. We're gonna be putting the onion in a pot with some butter and sauteing that. It's zoomed in on, we well, just do up here so that you can see it on the camera. Okay. <laughs> we'll zoom on that one then. Watch the fingers. Remember what I told you. Fingers like that. Last little bits. Okay, and then bring the pot over to the stove. <laughs> Put on the front burner on medium high heat. And we'll let that melt down and start to simmer. What am I doing? Um, Holly's gonna cut up the apples into just pieces. Just make sure you don't have the core inside. So like this. I'll do this one and do the next one. And there's the core. Okay. And then you just cut it any old way. It doesn't matter. No, 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 that's a quick way to lose your fingers. Turn it on its side like that so that at least one flat side is stable against the cutting board. And then kind of go in at an angle like that, see? Trying to preserve your fingers, I'd like for you to get into a delta with all 10, please. side as much as possible. And instead of going straight down, one of the best ways to control your knife is to go and like a rocket like that. Rather than like this, go like this. Gives you a little more control. You don't like control? Rocket. I don't know how to rock it. 
you start at the pointy end and roll it backwards. See? Well, some parts are easy, but some are not because it's a very firm apple. Did you just crack your knuckle? It had to, Pop. Ew. How you girls like doing that? Freaks me out. Okay, two more apples. Now that we have the butter melting pretty good, the onion sauteing pretty good, simmering here. We'll let them get a little bit transparent and then we'll add the chopped apples. Is that the last piece? them in with the onions carefully so you don't splatter get them all in there oh okay that works too all right mm -hmm. guess what time it is potatoes no oh. cabbage now the way that we're gonna do the cabbage because you can do it almost any way but the best way is to slice it thin like this. And here's where that rocking motion comes in really handy. Kind of kind of like this. See that? And as you get that ready, put that in the bowl. Sound effects. Is that the sound that the cabbage is making or that the knife is making? Me complaining. Oh, now just be careful, keep those fingers out of the way. What are you doing? I'm short. <laughs> Apparently she's short. not gonna bite you. It's no, just a camera. No, it's not gonna bite you. Check on the apples. Looking good. Whoa, see, that's the danger in being up too high as you fall. Well, these are not connected to my feet, so, yeah. What are not? What are not connected to your feet? Your legs? No, this is still cool. This is not <laughs> my natural height, so of course I'm gonna fall. Of course. Is 
Isn't this the most fun you've had all day today? No. Whoa. <laughs> A little violent there, aren't you? Uh, 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 don't break my knife. If James sees you doing that, he will have a cow. Never abuse your cutlery. That's good enough. It, it'll all cook down anyway. One more. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll rescue you. I'll do the last. Wait, though, because we're not done making it. Go ahead and move your stool. Plus, we also have to make the potatoes and the meatloaf. Okay, now I need the big, one of the big silver bowls to mix it all up in. Put this over by the Bigger one than that. I need apple cores and any other leftover scraps from the cutting, except for the potato peels, we can feed to the chickens. Thank you. Okay, we've got our hamburger. Ready to go. All right. I need you to whisk up those two eggs that are in that bowl and pour them in with the hamburger. How do you whisk? How do you whisk? With a whisk? Come here. Now just, without making it go all over. I'll have her on camera one way or another. Hey, people want to see your face. They're always asking me for your face. See, that's what you get when you get Holly's face. That looks good. Pour it in with the hamburger, please. And pour those pinko breadcrumbs in there, too. Mm-hmm. Just whatever's left in there. We may have to see if we have another box downstairs. What? The light. Hey, you raised okay. a vampire. Yeah. I raised a vampire. Nobody ever told me that. I thought you were a child. I thought you were a human. How do you know I'm human? That's what it said on your birth certificate. I'm um, gonna have to see if we have another box of pinko breadcrumbs. Okay, now that the apples have sauteed a bit and the, the onions have sauteed, now we're gonna add the cabbage. I know that looks like a lot, but it cooks down really well. So it doesn't really end up being a whole lot. We'll get that stirred up. Okay, now we're going to, now that the cabbage is kind of wilted down, I'll show you that, it's kind of wilted down. It's taken about five minutes. I'm gonna add in half a cup of brown sugar and a fourth of a cup of apple cider vinegar. About a half a teaspoon of allspice.
about the same amount of ground cloves, about half a teaspoon. Add a teaspoon of salt. like cover it turn it down to a simmer and let it go for about 15 minutes okay now I'm gonna make the meatloaf okay so like I said we've got our ground beef our bread and crumbs and our eggs and now we're gonna do about a teaspoon of salt and about a half a teaspoon of black pepper. I'm a big fan of pepper. And now some garlic powder. Doing about a teaspoon of garlic powder. Onion in there now, and about a cup of milk, give or take. And then comes the fun part that I'm going to have Holly do. Okay. <laughs> Happy face. Stupid technology. Stupid technology. What's wrong with technology? You love technology. Some points, yes. Some points, no. What points, no? You're recording. Ah, and what points, yes? Video games? Uh, it's mostly to the boys. Ah, um, anime? Yeah, kind of, ish, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else then. What else do you use technology for? I don't know, stuff. You use it at school? Mm 
Is that good or bad? Would you prefer not to? Mm -hmm. You should really squeeze your fingers in there. Squish it. No, not like that. Squish it. Squeeze it. Yeah, like that. Like you're mad at it. Except don't make it go on the floor. You gotta feel that it's all mixed up. You're, you're just turning it over now. I know. You have to actually squeeze it. <laughs> Why don't you do this? Because. Because of my arthritis, it's really bad to put my fingers in cold meat like that. It hurts a lot. So I usually have one of you kids do it. But I can do it. I just have to keep running over to the sink and turning on the hot water. Okay, um, don't have to hold it quite so high off the ball. <laughs> Once you've got it all mixed up, mashed and squished together, then you can put it in that baking pan and shape it into the shape of a meatloaf. All of it? Yeah, all of it. That's underneath it. <laughs> oh, that's just so appetizing. I just cannot get over how lovely that looks. I don't know how to shape it. <laughs> just make it, just squish it together like you're, like you're, I don't know, working with snow. I don't know. Like you're making a meatloaf shaped snowman. You don't think that was funny? No. It's terrible. It was terrible? Thanks a lot. Well, you don't have to shape it until you get it all in there. Mm. That's a big meatloaf. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at the size of that thing. May have to divide that in half. Make two of them. I thought we were doing that. No. What was that? Okay, stop what you're doing. We're going to have to divide it in half. This pan cannot handle it. Get me another baking sheet or baking dish. You'll have to wash your hands. We have got to turn this into two. Okay, we've divided it into two separate meatloafs. Yes. I'm used to cooking for a lot of people, but as Tim would say, that means there'll be more leftovers for lunch. So we're going to preheat the oven to 350 degrees, push bake, and then arrow up. Oh, I guess that's at 350 and now push start. Ta-da! And we'll check on our cabbage. Oh, that looks good. I think it's time to do the next step. Whoa, steamed up the screen. Okay, the red cabbage is ready for the next step. We're gonna add oh, about two thirds of a cup, maybe a little more of red cooking wine. And about four tablespoons of a dark red jelly. You can use currant jelly, plum jelly, raspberry, I am using plum. That gives it a nice sweetness. Give it a good stir. Now we're gonna let that cabbage cook for about another 10 minutes. we're going to cover it and simmer it for another 15 to 20 minutes. It could go as much as an hour or more. 
you know, especially if you're cooking it on a very low heat, you can put it in the crock pot and just let it go. I like it to be really cooked down. Some people like it a little more firm. It's up to you. Holly is working away, getting the potatoes peeled. We're waiting for the oven to finish preheating and then we'll pop the meatloaf in. Holly's cutting up the potatoes for the mashed potatoes. We just, for the most part, we just quarter them. Some of them have to be a little bit smaller, but that's for the most part, we just quarter them up. Oh, that was close. waiting for everything to cook we have to let the meatloaf cook about halfway so it's about 45 minutes and then we're gonna brush it with a topping now well, time to take off the apron make something hot to drink maybe some hot chocolate because it is a really cold blustery day outside can you hear that Oh, Daisy, you must have to go to the bathroom really bad. You too, Duncan. I'm not going out there. It's cold and windy. We'll have a look out front at the blusteriness. Might be time to bring in the hummingbird feeder. I don't know if they're gonna be using it anymore. I don't know, do hummingbirds, do they hibernate? I don't know, I should research that. We're supposed to have snow. Right now it's just rain, but I expect it probably will turn to snow. Are you ready to come back in? Is it cold? Come on, Duncan, where are you? All the way over there. All right, well, I'll wait for you. to make the glaze to go over the meatloaf. I wonder if I could do it this way. Okay, I'm going to add about three-fourths of a cup of ketchup, fourth a cup of a cup of brown sugar, a fourth of a cup of apricot preserves, and about a tablespoon or so of Worcestershire sauce, and a little dash of salt and pepper.
is the meatloaves. Back in the oven. Finish cooking. Got about another half hour to go. Which means it's time to start the potatoes. There. Got them going. Should be all set. I love this time of year. I love when it gets rainy and stormy and windy and cold. It's perfect. That sounds like just the thing. Combine a couple. A couple of kinds. I'll do the Stevens mix again. And the Ghirardelli dark. My kids probably don't love red cabbage, but we're, it's kind of a tradition. I know some of them like it, some of them don't like it, and I'm fine with that. But ever since we watched this scene in a Christmas story where they're having meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and red cabbage, um, the kids feel like they have to have that and watch a Christmas story. So it's kind of become a traditional thing to have at this time of year. And it's kind of a tradition that when I'm making it, somebody will inevitably come in the kitchen and say, what are you making? And I'll say red cabbage. And no matter what kind of a face they make, I usually will say, you love red cabbage, Ralphie, because that's what his mom says in the movie. So that's kind of a tradition too. Weird, but that's a tradition of ours. So. Milk is nice and hot. goodly amount of both because I like it really really chocolatey have to wait for it to get done. Okay, testing the potatoes. Fork goes through them easily. They're done. Checking on the meatloaf. And the thermometer says 170. It's done. So dinner ready and I know that a lot of recipes would say that it needs to go another half hour based on time I don't go by time I go by a meat thermometer it's a lot more reliable 
And there it is. All done. And it's beautiful. <laughs>